Gentlemen, welcome to the first session of the second day of the IFX Expo. I hope you all had fun at the night party last night. I know that I certainly did. Our first panel this morning is going to talk about the online trading sector, its uniqueness in the world of affiliate marketing, and how we can tap into its vast network of potential brokers and affiliates. In order to do that, we need knowledge and expertise. And here to share that with us today, we've got a wonderful panel uh, of experts. And I'm going to introduce the moderator of this panel, Andrew Marina, founder and CEO of InstructFX. Let's welcome him to the stage. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Sound OK, image OK? We're good? Good morning, I'm Andrew Marina. I'm the founder and CEO at uh, InstructFX, which is an education hub for traders and also an introducing broker. And a couple of months ago, we launched a new project called Dot Financial News. Now, some of you might know me from my aggressive YouTube uh, interviews. Most of you never heard of me, because let's face it, I didn't do anything notable for the humankind. So for most of you that don't know me, don't worry, that's why I'm here. I'm here to make friends. Uh, very nice to see all of you. Very nice to see you're doing well, because you are doing well, aren't you? You smashed it with a Bitcoin rush, didn't you? Come on. It's okay to brag a bit. We're all in the same industry here. Now, very nice to see all of you, and very nice to see the amazing job that was done this year here in Limassol, Cyprus, by the plastic surgeons and the beauty salons, because looking at you this morning, you're absolutely wonderful, beautiful people. Good morning. Now, on a serious note, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the IFX Expo 2021. Growth Busters is the name of the panel, and I'll keep you company for the next 45 minutes or so. Now, today, I'm excited to share the stage with four industry professionals. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. But before we let the games begin, I have a question for you. If I could bring Jennifer Aniston on the stage this morning, would you give her a round of applause? Well, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I can't bring Jennifer Aniston on the stage this morning, but I tell you whom I can bring. Ladies and gentlemen, Elena Christodoulou, Regional Manager, Duck Bay Area at Marquez.com. Good morning, Elena. Good morning and welcome. Right, ladies, gentlemen, traders, my second guest for this morning, Head of Affiliates at Financial Partners Marketing, the one and only, Vivian Mirzahi. Good morning, Vivian. My next victim on the panel, Director of Performance and New Business at Outbrain, Haran Rosenwig. Good morning, Haran. And finally, the last, the last but not the least, Victor Karpenko, CEO at uh, SEO Profit. Good morning, Victor. Right, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, Forex industry and the financial markets went through some changes in the last couple of years. So let me start by asking you, what are those changes that we saw in the last couple of years? Who wants to start? Go on, Vivian. Hi, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so I believe that after CISEC uh, changed the regulation and asked um, very low leverage, that totally changed the market. That increases the prices for us. It changes uh, everything we knew to the, need to do in the marketing size. But um, we did it like, I know that we found solutions, the clients can keep coming, but the leverage really changed everything we do. It was a break point, but we are growing back again. And after COVID time, I'm not sure what, how the other brokers did, but I'm sure we did amazing. So we managed to survive. Well done, but you didn't survive by yourself. You had a lot of help from introducing brokers and affiliates. How, um, how much of the new business came from introducing brokers and affiliates in the last couple of years? So, um, I'm not working with IBs, okay? Uh, that's very complicated. CISEC, they don't like IBs. So, I'm doing affiliation, organic traffic, um, and it was tough on my partners. This was very difficult on them. Like they had to restructure everything on their side and how they are speaking to their clients. So, but yeah, they found a solution. Um, 
we have to survive and people keep coming. They are interested in this. Right, and now uh, another question, very, very sensitive question. You mentioned the changes in, um, in the regulation of uh, IBs and uh, affiliates. How do we know as affiliates if this is the right partnership for us when we're partnering with, uh, with a financial firm? Oh, I love firm? this question. So I believe the word partnership, it's the most important part of this question. So a partnership is where both sides are winning. Like we need to understand what the other side needs to make money and what we need to make money. So when an affiliate comes and they sit with us and say, oh, we need uh, $1,300 to promote you. And they say, okay, so what can you bring? Like what kind of clients you're bringing? And it's, it's not a partnership. We cannot start with this. Partnership, it starts where you find a good rate together, that you make tests together. And then you can change with time. You can decrease the conditions, increase the CPA, and that's all about the quality of the traffic you're getting. So a partnership, both sides need to win. It's a partnership. I don't call them affiliates. They're really my partners. They win money from, like, we are winning the company. We just share with them. If they're good, I'll be happy to give a lot of money. All right. Thank you, Vivian. Now, let's make things even more complicated, guys. Elena. In the last few years, we saw an influx of uh, trading uh, educators and trading gurus. What makes the difference, in your view, between a proper trading educator and a trading guru? Um, well... Yeah, it's working. It's working. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I think that both of them have their space in the industry. Um, generally speaking, an educator is somebody who will teach you more trading, more the skills, more technical, fundamental analysis. Whereas a guru has a more holistic approach. A guru will also take, um, take a bit the role of a, of a life coach, I believe, who will also teach you about other things, eventually about psychology. And uh, yeah, he will support you eventually also in other parts other than just the trading. Yes, very well said. And how legit are these uh, trading gurus? Um, I don't think we can say generally they are or they are not. It all depends. I believe that there are a lot of them that are indeed providing um, value to the clients and that they will support them to become better, where, whereas there might be others that are not as serious. Yes, indeed. Now, let's talk a bit about brand safety because every time we partner with an introducing broker or an affiliate or a new partner, we have to guarantee brand safety. And for this one, I'm going to invite uh, Haran to share some, uh, some views. How can you assure brand safety when working with IBs and affiliates, Haran? So there's no real way to assure it 100%. Uh, but what but you can do is keep in mind that if it's a new affiliate, you can't show all your cards. So you can't open all of your markets. You can't give them the top CPAs that you can offer the top CPLs. You need to start slow. Uh, if it's possible, ask them to promote your own domain so you can actually track what they're doing and see which uh, traffic source they're using. Once you learn that this is someone you can trust, you can offer him new markets where it's more sensitive uh, and be sure that what you're getting is what you're actually paying for. Right, very, very, very nice said. Now, how is the fact that many traffic sources have different guidelines and, uh, and rules uh, affect your relationships with your other affiliates? So it's always difficult to open your morning and getting an email that Facebook approved something and Google approved something else and we as Alpin don't approve it. Uh, what they need to understand is that each market or each platform has different guidelines because the way the traffic is coming from. If you're looking at Facebook, then the traffic is coming from their own website, so they completely control what they offer and what they allow. Uh, we as Alpin, for example, work with publishers such as CNN or The Spiegel and we have to obey their guidance as well. Usually, the changes are not that big. It's wording, it's new creatives. It's not something that should bother you too much. Uh, if it's a good affiliate, if it's a smart affiliate, they can make the changes super quick uh, and win all of the traffic sources and not just stay in one of them. Right, now, you mentioned Facebook a second ago. We all know the changes that, uh, that happened in, uh, in the industry yeah, regarding advertisement. So now, I want to ask an SEO specialist. What would you say is one of the, the best SEO strategies that uh, worked for you? Um, the best is to rank. <laughs> 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 uh, 
uh, uh, like we're all talking here about some changes, but basically for like from affiliate side where people were generating traffic, Google uh, people didn't start uh, searching for best forex broker. You know they they were they are searching even more. What actually like big affiliates do they? They just scale. They go to every market and just trying to rank all these money keywords. So like, uh, and then it's like, if some regulation change, okay, you just like this notice on your website on, on the first screen. You just change the text and that's all. But what I see, because like I also um, like do stuff in a casino niche. Like forex is like maybe five to ten times easier than casino niche right now. So like, um, it's not that hard. Um, like. Proper, uh, if it's brand brand, if everything legit, if it's not a review website like of some affiliate, of course it's like a maximum white hat strategy where you just mostly getting earning like paying like but saying that you're earning the the links and uh, doing like the content, doing the stuff like and just targeting the right keywords. But if it goes to the affiliate site and where you can actually play without like because the the problem like for example us working with the broker it's compliance when we say look we want to change this they say no like uh, and in some way we use we are proxy in their website sometimes we just like show to google one uh, and to users they actually go to broker website different sometimes it works but in most in most cases it's it's like even for broker it's better to make their review website and just play with this review website put themselves number one in the rating stuff and just generate more and more traffic yep and is there a way to overcome the the changes in um, in advertisement yeah like i mean um who, like you can make ranking criteria, right? <laughs> How to rate forex broker? Uh, I mean, like if it comes from casino, you can create fake persona that is like actually rating r rating this. So it's like, and then you just according to your rating criteria, you just value the broker, right? That's all. Right. Okay. And in terms now working with affiliates, yeah, because this is very important because a lot of business comes from IBs and affiliates. In terms of working with affiliates, what sort of marketing strategies do firms usually implement? And um, is it a unique strategy per channel or they, they do everything as a bulk? They advertise everything as a bulk? It's for me, question, yeah? Yes. Uh, okay, um, because like, um, just a little reminder, I mostly work in agencies, so we basically do the work, like SEO work for like Forex brokers and stuff. But yes, we have like uh, partners who do their own project as an affiliate side. So um, it's, it's simple as it can be. All you need to do, set up a team, put them KPIs, I don't know, generate 1000 FTDs per month, like from organic search and just rank for the keyword clusters you pick. But how we do this? Like, Because, you know, most of the people bug and it's hard to, do. everyone wants to rank for best uh, Forex uh, broker. We just like do this, uh, go to terms and condition and look, okay, what they are trading, crypto, this, this, this. Okay, so it's like sub niche. Uh, then what platform they use, like, uh, like, then like the keywords with platform. Okay, what payment method they use to deposit? Like it's already 150 pages, right? Like in and one language. You can use like Vietnamese language. You can go to different geos. It's like the same. So uh, our work is just to see where it will give ROI. For example, we do dashboard. We see for for this cluster and page, we can, I don't know, spend $5,000 and made 25 in one year. Is it worth it? Okay, let's start. So we analyze like hundreds of them and just pick. And out of this, we make a budget, make a strategy and trying to get to this KPIs. Yep. I understand. Now again, regulation and changes, because this is very important. The changes in the regulatory frames did not uh, only affect uh, trading firms. The entire financial sector went through some rough changes. Did we learn any lessons from uh, comparable uh, industries? Who wants to answer this? Elena. Um, well, generally speaking, the CFT industry is unique. I don't think that it's that easy to compare it to another industry. Um, something that we witnessed in the past was that the, the, 
the big players, let's say, they were dictating pretty much how the industry was run. So with the MIFID II changes and so further, I think there was a little bit of a revolution that was needed um, to put guidelines and to standardize the things in order to have a harmonized product of the industry. So coming back to your question, I think, as I said, the CF industry, CFD industry is so unique that it's very hard to compare it to another industry. All right, fair enough. She's making my life difficult, guys. She's making my life very difficult this morning. That's my job. <laughs> right. Now, I have uh, more questions for you. Let's talk money for a minute. Who wants to talk money? I always like to talk money. <laughs> now, again, affiliates and uh, introducing brokers. Obviously, don't do this for free. How did the CPA change in the last couple of years? Or did it change in the last couple of years? Um, you mean the amounts that are paid? Yes, roughly. Roughly. Um, we don't want to get in trouble. Okay, I can answer that. So, Go as on. I said before, previously, it depends on the traffic source. Uh, it depends on what we're doing to generate the clients and the quality of the clients. We have default payouts on like 450 for European clients. Okay, what I see, the change is like affiliates each year, they're coming and asking $200 more each year. So it started with, oh, I need 600, then 800, then 1,000. And I was in Amsterdam last week, and they came to our booth and said 1,200. I said, how can I start a partnership like this? It's, so this is, I, I wish the affiliate can understand the cost from our side. We understand that from their side, it's also increasing. They need to change. The conversion rate decreased because of all the requests from SISIC and everything we need to change in the content. Um, but as Elena said, that's amazing for our industry. It's uh, making our industry serious. Uh, it's uh, separating us from the binary and from everything that it's not, people don't see with good eyes. Uh, so that's very good for us. The rates, yeah, we start with 450 for Europe. We can go above that. We can even pay $1,200 happily, and that depends on the traffic source uh, and the quality of the clients. I think what, uh, what to be added here, I think a broker will always beg the winners. So if you have an affiliate that's worth its money, then the, uh, the prices can be definitely negotiated. Is it 1200 I mean, you always pay what you get. Right, so guys, if anyone needs uh, to change their industry, there you go, you can make a lot of money with these guys. <laughs> now, cryptocurrencies, who wants to talk cryptocurrencies? There we go, I heard the noise in the room, right. <laughs> now, where do you see CFDs going in the near uh, future, guys? Are we still gonna have uh, stock and commodities traders or mainly crypto traders? I believe in the CFD industry. I'm working with uh, Forex for the past 14 years. I've been so many, I have passed so many cycles, like up and down, up and down, changes and new regulations, and we survive. We see the people that want to trade Forex and CFD, they're looking, they still, <laughs> new 18 people, new 18 year old guys are always coming in and studying the markets. I believe that crypto is a totally separate industry. Uh, People can be a CF, anyone can be a CFD trader and a crypto trader. Like crypto, it will ha definitely have their own space in our, in, in our market. People need to have the crypto today to transfer money easily, to pay less taxes. People are trying to find these things. Uh, and that's not going, it, they're not competing. It's not a comp competi competing industries. They work together. They do. Now, however, you have the CFDs. Yeah, and you have the uh, physical assets, as physical as a crypto can yeah, get. Sure. You can buy crypto. How, how do you see it in the, in the near future? More CFD trading in terms of cryptocurrencies or more purchasing from, from exchanges? Me personally, I work with a couple of brands. I'm here focused in Libertax, our regulated SISEC company, but we, I'm also in managing a crypto brand. Uh, and they're not competing. Affiliates, they can find the same client, they go to the CFD broker and the crypto guy. So a crypto, of someone that wants to buy crypto, they will buy crypto and you have the trader. Two different things. And can I yes, add to please. that, it's not just it's a different thing. Uh, if you look at the affiliate, not everyone approves right now to run crypto. It was already labeled as something problematic. So as affiliates, you can run crypto on some sources, you can run CFDs on other sources. 
they don't have to collide. They can work together uh, and not cause any problems. Right, very well said. Now, we had the millennial traders yeah, coming, um, coming to the trading stage. How is their behavior versus the conservative traders? What do they want, basically? How do they trade? Who can answer this? I think the millennials, they're more influenced by gaming. So I think this is an aspect which, is, um, which has not been yet so much um, included in the CFD trading, but which is a nice trend to follow. We see more and more brokers having their own um, platforms, which can be a bit gamified now. So for the millennials, I think that's a very interesting uh, thing to do. And what's the proportion of, of traders, millennials versus uh, conservative traders mm -hmm. right now? Can, does anyone have numbers, roughly? No numbers. It's too new, the trend, I think, to have some clear statistics on that. I think we will be able to see that more towards the end of the year next year to get some statistics to see based on the age, who's a millennial, what's the proportion of um, them trading CFDs. Right, Victor, quick question. Uh, Elena mentioned uh, the gamified platform. Okay. How is that working with, with the SEO? Do you see higher uh, demand on... on let's say, nicer gamified platforms in advertising? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I don't actually like, um, like, if it's conversion, optim uh, like, uh, um, optimization, basically we'll look at it, okay, we send this amount of, like, before it, the statistic, like, the, the worst statistic was, 100 uh, people from organic, one FTD. Like, it was, it changed a bit. That's why some people uh, come and say, like, look, uh, it was 600 before or 400. Yeah. We understand. <laughs> we understand. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 that's why. And most, uh, like, affiliates, uh, I'll answer two questions, but they're all related. Like, uh, most affiliates look at numbers. Like, they also have their KPIs, right? Money. They want to make, like, uh, good PNL and they want to be in a profit, right? So they use TDS, they test different uh, like affiliate programs for the same stuff and they just compare. And some of them even have like, for example, in your uh, like affiliate brand, they probably can have three to four different accounts in the, like for different companies. So they can like kind of check, you see, <laughs> to see to see the statistics. That's probably why they come up with this amount. Or they have a lot of different offers. Like, of course, they would go to some people who offer twelve. Uh, uh, hundred dollars than six because uh, like we can say that at some point it will be too expensive for both sides yeah right do you agree yeah, yeah. at some point it's, it's going to be too expensive for us with um yeah and the question was about a gamifying platform is it like yeah is there a, a bigger a high request of that sort of marketing versus the traditional marketing which we saw until now mm. I don't know about traditional market. We just do SEO. <laughs> <laughs> so not there's your answer, guys. Uh, SEO not, is not traditional. <laughs> no, it, it works like it's like I do SEO 15 years, nothing changed. You know, like uh, especially in Forex right now to have like this expertise, like for example, we do PBNs. It's like kind of website that we build networks and just hide them, you know, and other competitors come and they just look, oh, it's so easy, it's so cool. We're going to rank. They come and they don't do any results. Why? Because like, uh, like, it's the technology like, uh, that you can use years by years and just building your network more and more. And for example, to rank, I don't know, like in South Africa for best Forex broker, uh, it can take you like two or three hundred these websites that also people don't take uh, like as a fact that they exist for some brands and they rank, but you know, Right, I'm with you. Now, I heard we have uh, SISEC around, so let's talk uh, safety and security once again. Haran, I hope you can help me with this. Um, what's the, the best thing and the, and the worst thing that can happen to one of the IBs or the affiliates that doesn't stick to the rules, basically? So, we as a platform, and it goes to everyone else as well, have a really long memory. Uh, if, you ca if you get caught running something unregulated uh, or use a fake license, the chances of you going back to that media channel, even if at some point you want to run something else, 
uh, slim to none. Uh, it's a one shot and you're out. Uh, for us, uh, as a company, if people run regulated offers, it's much easier to offer them more publishers, uh, better rates on our CPC, more networks. Uh, again, it's a safe environment for you as a brand, as a broker, uh, but it's also a safe environment for our publishers, for our users, uh, and the people you want to acquire as well. Right, so you basically stop working with them immediately. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's once you're out, you're out. Right, okay. Now, we have, a, we have a short panel today, guys. Closing question, uh, closing statements, please. Let's start with the ladies, if you're brave enough. Sure. Closing statements, please. Well, um, I, I liked what um, was said before by Vivian. Uh, working with affiliates is always about a partnership. So um, for both parties, it's always important um, to get the best out of this relationship. Um, hence, I think it's very important to get to know each other good, to work with a broker that you can trust, that has a reputation to pay its affiliates on time, has a good balance sheet, and is regulated internationally and globally. Wow. Okay. Vivian. So what I can say that um, I believe the affiliates should test as many brokers as they can. Their traffic source um, can fit one broker better. And when the, the broker, the operator, tells you that they cannot pay $1,000 for your traffic source, it doesn't mean that you won't be able to get $1,000 from other operator. Some operators, they're working with uh, sales, support, some others are auto-conversion, different products, um, trading, trading strategies. So test, 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 go slow, it's a partnership. Uh, you need to hear the other side. The, the broker have all the interest in the world that our partners make a lot of money. We want them to make a, a lot of money because that means we're going to be making a lot of money as well. Yes. Uh, I think this goes out to affiliates and brokers as well. Be super smart when choosing who you work with. Uh, if you're an affiliate and want to pick your first broker, uh, Pick someone that you believe in, someone that you know is going to push you forward uh, and not bounce back on you once you do something wrong or you're not able to supply as much traffic. Uh, and if you're a broker, be smart about the affiliates you choose as well. If someone over-promises and tell you they can bring all the traffic in the industry, they're lying. Uh, so I understand that it's a long uh, marathon and it's not a sprint that you can switch back and forth all the time. Very nicely said. Victor. Two, one, two. <laughs> I'm just checking. Uh, so I, I would just recommend uh, in any way do SEO. I mean, <laughs> just because it works and just because it's hard, uh, to, like if it's like PPC or other source of traffic, you can do it tomorrow. You can do it right now, right? And uh, But just to build brand, it's hard to trust with the Google. And this trust builds not like in one day, it builds like years by years. And But overall, like your ROI, like for example, in the beginning, yes, of course, it's super expensive, you know, and it's super long, and it's like you need to have this patience just to get to break even. But then it goes, goes, like um, it's like in the period of one and a half, two years, it's much more profitable, mostly than any channel of the traffic, like the SRIC, but not that many people can go to the end and just get this result. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Victor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do we have any questions for the panel? Any brave people? Go on. Yes, I want to ask you, um, prior to the regulations of IBS and affiliates in the European market... Sorry, can you hear? Hello? Yeah. Um, prior to the regulations coming in, um, and the IBS that you had worked with before on, say, a lot rebate uh, basis, what have you seen those traditional IBS doing to compensate for the loss of that perpetual income? You mean clients lost, or you mean uh, uh, commission, IB lost? Co uh, commission lost uh, on the IB's side. I, I didn't understand the question. You, Sorry, the question? So, so what I'm saying, the, the, the IB's, uh, the traditional IB's that were working with uh, brokers on a lot rebate ba basis, not on CPA, prior to the regulations coming in. Um, what kind of feedback have you had um, with those traditional IB's, and what have they done to compensate for the... The, the loss of income on... on I didn't subject. have this problem uh, in Libertax because we never had rebates and revenue share. I'm always working on CPA. Uh, we had, uh, f for not a regulated brand, we had IBs getting revenue share but on spreads. 
we never did on PNL or nothing like this. So yes, I don't I mean, have much experience like this. So we didn't have to do any compensation. They no were problem. happy with yeah. us already. <laughs> yeah. No problem. Yeah. But um, in this case, I think a lot of affiliates, they started to diversify. So whereas before you were um, getting commission based on the volume, now a lot of them switched to affiliate deals. On top of that, a lot of them offered extra, um, let's say, courses. Edu they became educators in order to have a second revenue, um, revenue stream. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very well said. Any other brave people this morning? Any other questions for our lovely uh, panelists? There we go. Hello. Hello. Um, such a competitive industry that I see an affiliate website. They have over hundreds, uh, over 100 offers from different brokers. So all the brokers going to one or two, some of the big affiliate website to make a, such a competitive offer. So how do you win affiliate over your offer compared to the others? So many affiliates are building these review pages and they just contact the broker to get a tracking link and to monetize with everything they can from their page. Uh, from our side, if it's a good uh, website, we'll give extra commission to be on the first, as you said, we need to be in the first two, three yet parts on the, the best top brokers. Thank you, Vivian. Next uh, question, please. I, I would just add really quickly, uh, c c can I, uh, so basically it's like in casino niche, you can send, like people click in one, two, three, like they want to see like top brokers, right? That ranking number one, number two. So affiliates basically know the price of their first, second uh, place or third, and they sell flat plus CPA, you know? So flat, it means, yeah, it, it, in this case it works. Mm -hmm. Um, I think another aspect that we need to take into consideration is that the leads will convert. Because end of the day, the affiliate might send you the traffic, but if the broker is not able to convert, there will not be a deposit, hence the affiliate will not get paid. So um, I think that's something that needs to be cons into consideration there, because even if a broker offers you, let's say, the most wonderful affiliate deal that you can dream of, if the, uh, if the lead will not convert, you go home with nothing. So um, you have to make sure that the broker also has a team, has salespeople, retention people, in order for you to really get that FTD in. And in this case, if everything sounds like like uh, good, the, you work with revenue share, you know, as affiliate. It's much more profitable that uh, to get uh, twelve hundred, uh, you know, you can get fifty thousand out of this like uh, player that came. So like, um, what what I'm saying is is like. Um, if the affiliate find the right broker and he, as a partner, trust them and they shave like little, you know, like uh, <laughs> like uh, like percent, like don't pay all the uh, amount. So like in this case, yeah, it's better to switch to revenue share. And I think you were more used in the casino industry to get this, <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. If allowed by regulation, of course. Yeah, yeah regulation comes first. Right, next question, please. Okay, um, I have a question for Victor. I see a lot of brokers starting their own articles and want to rank on Google. And my question is, how is it possible to compete with them as individual affiliate? Because they are already a big brand, have a lot of money, and me, I'm a small affiliate site. Uh, yeah, how, what is the best way, or do you have some tips to compete against them on big keywords? I mean, that's obvious to grow. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, so, like you, you can be, be a big affiliate in one, two years. So basically, yeah, it's like people who have money and they have right expertise, they probably can go faster, right? How to compete? I don't know. Just, just to see, right, reverse engineer what they do. But, you know, all I see right now in Casino and Forex, like the more budget you have, the faster you can get these results, you know, and you, not that many affiliates can buy links from main pages that cost like 1,000 euros per year, you know, like how many of them you need. Like you go to Open Collective, Patreon, another website, you can get 100 bucks per month, so you don't pay all the amount, like, but overall, what I see, we are building team, right, like, uh, for example, Forex Broker comes to us and they have all this, um, regulation stuff. So we say, okay, we can build a network of affiliate website on 20 geos. 
So we set up people and we just built 20 affiliate websites, rank them number one, and they plus they make money on their competitors as well as a, an affiliate, as a broker. So, it, but but you need to. Uh, it, it's a separate business for them. For them, it's just the way how they can make more traffic, and like, and they have access for review pages, right? Like, for example, they can review other forex brokers, <laughs> like, and say, by the way, like, you know, and just increase conversion, like, and get much more traffic than forex brokers. So, like, answering your question, you need to like. Uh, to be in the shape, like, and just look for the markets, they're not gonna go nearest time future and just to scale, because like, the scale is the only way. Like, the more people and team and money you have, the more you can build and just like, be smarter, you know? Right, thank you for the questions. Yes, we have another question there at the back. Yes, I have a question for Haran. What are the differences that you see between brokers buying and affiliates buying in, uh, in, on your network? And what are basically the differences in the power of buying between being an affiliate and being a broker? I think the big difference, uh, and I'm sorry if there's any brokers here who are going to get offended, uh, most affiliates are smarter, they're quicker to respond. They have a lot more experience in media buying in different channels. Uh, so if you as a broker want to grow, sometimes it's going to be much smarter to pick a right affiliate and running with them. Uh, the brokers are more restricted, they're slower to move if they want to write a new piece of content and promote that. It's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, the affiliates see everything that's on the network, not stuff that's just CFDs or crypto. Uh, so they have much more knowledge and it's easier for them to grow your business sometimes. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? There we go, first row. Hi. Uh, so my question is uh, about marketing channels. Apart from uh, SEO, PPC, um, uh, directories, what are what are the most reliable uh, marketing channels to find uh, affiliates? To find affiliates? Yes. Brilliant question. Uh, uh, conferences, <laughs> yeah. networking. It's much easier to find someone that knows someone than to go on Google and search websites and. You need to know the company behind all the websites. You cannot search each website on the, the first uh, page in each uh, geo. I think there's a big advantage in conferences because you actually see the person. Uh, so it's super easy to learn who you're talking to and not just what they're saying uh, and get a good vibe for them. If there's someone you're not feeling right to work with, don't work with them in a conference. It's much easier to spot them out. Also, um, never to underestimate a good reputation. If as a broker you have a good reputation, it's so much easier to get affiliates because they will come to you. And um, the word of mouth is very important, so also the affiliates will speak um, amongst each other. So if a broker has a reputation to pay on time, to convert well, this will become kind of like public among them and this will um, make sure that more affiliates will come to you by themselves. Yeah, I'm not sure on which side are you, if you're affiliate or if you're operator, but both sides have their own Skype with information about the other side, you know, where you can check information if they're re reliable or not. Yeah, uh, uh, and what I see is like, sometimes you can switch. For example, I was like not that long time ago in Dentings conference in Florida, you know, and there I found people who actually generate pretty good traffic, like in their niche, but, and they're really tough, you know, like they, they just already do in a scale. And you're like, do you want to try Forex? <laughs> you know, like, or uh, it will, like, will be conference for cannabis, like in Las Vegas. You go and it's not about, like, it's about the person and can this person deliver. But if they can deliver, like, they can do any niche, you know. And also you need the SEO specialists and wizards like, uh, like Victor to make this happen. Right, any other questions, beautiful people? We're getting very close to the finish line. Anyone else brave? No? Right, okay. Let's wrap it up then. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the uh, tremendous pleasure of uh, hosting this uh, panel uh, for you today. We had Elena Christodoulou, Head of uh, Regional Manager, Tak Bay Area at Marquez.com. We had Vivian Mirzaki with us. We had uh, Haran Rosengwin with us. And of course, an SEO specialist, Viktor Karpenko. This was it from our side today. Thank you ever so much. And I'll see you at the next panel. Thank you for your attention, everyone. Thank you.